Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this Discord JS tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Chart.js within actual embedded images for your Discord bots. A quick example, if I go into my tutorial channel, I can type exclamation point chart and it's gonna generate a dynamic chart here that is going to use some JSON data that I made. This is the growth for the Warnoff Keys Discord server. You can add in different types of data and you can customize all of this on the fly using your own code. And that's exactly what I'm going to be showing you how to do within this video. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install the chart.js-node-canvas project. This is going to allow us to use chart.js and then convert the resulting graph or chart into an actual image using canvas. And then we can attach that image into our Discord messages. So scrolling down, we see the contents with installation, or you can just see right here, we want to go ahead and run this command where we install chart.js node canvas as well as chart.js. So I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to go into my console and I'm going to right click to paste and then press enter to go ahead and install these. Now we can go into VS code and I'm going to be using the commando framework for today. But if you're familiar with a different command system, then feel free to use that. As long as you're understanding the concepts that I'm teaching here, then any system should work for you. So I'm going inside the commands folder. I'm going to go inside the misc folder and i'm going to make a new file called chart.js and within here we first have to import commando and then export an actual command using the commando framework so that's going to look like const commando equals require discord.js dash commando and then we're going to go ahead and export a class so module.exports equals class we'll call this chart command and this is going to extend using the extends keyword commando.command now within here, we're gonna have the entire functionality from commando to actually create our command. We have to actually initialize it and set it up within a constructor function, which will have one parameter, which is the client. Now within here, we do have to call the constructor function for the command class, which we are extending. And in order to do that, we can simply call the super function and pass in two arguments. The first one being the client, which we now have access to from the constructor's parameters. The second one is going to be an object which will contain different pieces of information about this command. So for example, we can have the name, which is just going to be chart. We're going to have the group, which will be misc because the misc group is attached to the misc folder, which is where our file is inside. We could then have a member name, which will also be chart. This is going to be the name of the command within the exact group that we are in. And then we can add in a description, which will be displays a chart. Now, optionally, you can add in user permissions which is an array of strings. However, I'm not gonna do that. So in this case, anyone can actually display this chart. We then need a run method, which is going to be an asynchronous method with one parameter, which will be the message. And now at this stage, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and import the package that we installed. So going up to the top, right below our commando import, we can say const, we're gonna have an object here, and this is going to equal require chart js dash node canvas and we are wanting to export the canvas render service which is going to allow us to pass in our chart js configuration and then get back the actual image i'm also going to import some test data inside of a json file so if you look inside of the video description you'll find a link to this and so you can go ahead and simply click on it to actually copy these values or you can add in your own test data so to make this simple, I'm just gonna put this file within the misc directory. I'm going to call this chart-data.json. And within here, I'm going to paste in this data right here, which is just simply an array of objects which contain a member property and a date property. And this is going to be some stats that I logged from the Warnoff Keys Discord. So I can go ahead and save this. And going back into our chart file, we can also import that by saying const data equals require chart-data.json. Now let's make sure everything is working correctly. So inside of the run, I'm going to simply console log the data so we can make sure the command is working and that we're also importing the correct file. I can go ahead and save this. I can go to my bot and run this with node index.js. And then going into my Discord server, I can then run exclamation point chart. And we now see this within the console. I can go ahead and stop the bot and we see the actual JSON object right here. So that means that both the command and the actual data is working. So going back into VS Code, we can now try and gain access to the data in a different way 
We want all of the members to be in their own array, and we want all of the dates to be in their own array as well. So I'm going to create two arrays. We're going to say const members equals an empty array, then also const date equals an empty array. Now at this stage, I'm going to simply loop through the data and then push these elements into this array. This is one of the simpler ways in order to do this. So I can say for const item of data, and then we can say members.push. We can pass an item.members with an S because that's what the property is. And then we can also say date.push with item.date. Now at this stage, we have two different arrays which are going to be representing the actual members and the actual dates within the entire object we're importing. And you'll see why this is useful in the future when we go to actually use this within Chart.js. We now want to go ahead and configure how large we want this image to be. I'm going to create a constant called width and set this equal to 800 and a constant called height and set this equal to 600. You can go ahead and use whatever sizes you want. We now want to create a function which will be called chart callback. And this is going to just be an empty function for now. However, it will have one parameter, which will be chart.js. It's spelled like this with a certain capitals. It doesn't technically matter, but it's just how the documentation recommends it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. We'll come back to this function here soon, but first let's go down to our run method. And within here, I'm going to start off by deleting our console log, and then we can go ahead and actually try to create our graph using chart.js. So I can say const canvas equals new canvas rendering service, which is what we imported near the top from the actual package that we installed. And then within here, we have to pass in three different arguments. The first one is going to be the width. The second one is going to be the height. And the third one is going to be the callback that we created, which I called chart callback. So we can go ahead and add those in. Again, we'll be coming back to this function soon, but for now, just leave it blank. Now under this, we have to actually configure our chart.js configuration. And I'm not going to go into the very specific details of chart.js. However, I do plan on covering that very soon within the channel. If you are interested in a lot more detailed chart.js specific videos, then let me know down in the comments. The more people who recommend that, the faster I'll try and get those out to you guys. However, for this exact tutorial, just follow along and I can also link to the chart.js documentation in the description. It's actually a fairly simple library to use. And so with this basic example, that should be good enough to get you started for you to then look at the documentation and you should get a pretty good idea of what to do. So I'm going to create a constant called configuration. This is going to be an object. The first thing we can do is we can specify what type of graph or chart we want. So I'm going to say type is bar. You can have a bunch of different types of graphs and you can check those out within the chart JS documentation. Again, that'll be linked in the video description. Now, after that, we can pass in a data property, which is going to be an object where we're going to have different labels and data sets. So the labels are going to be what is actually on the bottom here, the actual dates. And so we can go ahead and specify our dates array. So we can say labels will be dates. And then the next property is going to be data sets with an S here. This is going to be an array of objects. In this exact instance, we're only going to have one object and we're going to be passing in three different properties within this object. There are more things you, you can use to customize this, but that's going to be inside of the documentation. So I can say label. This is going to be the actual thing that's at the top of the chart. For example, Discord members. So I'm going to go ahead and say Discord members. We could then pass in data, which is going to be the actual bars right here that you see with the actual data representation. And then the values that we pass in from the actual data will then also be displayed on this left key right here. So we can actually see what these actual lines here represent with an actual value. So we can go back and then our data is going to be our members array. We could then have a background color, which is going to be the discord logo color, which is 7289D9. And that's just something I Googled. I don't memorize that for obvious reasons. And then with this said, we can go ahead and save this. However, this isn't actually going to do anything because both our canvas and our configuration are unused. So I'm going to click on this right here. So it shows me where it ends. So I would start at the next spot. And we now need only a couple more things. We need to first generate an image using chart.js and this canvas object right here will greatly help with that. And then we have to attach that image inside of an actual message attachment. And then we have to send that within the channel. So let's say const image equals await. And this is why this function has to be asynchronous. 
I'll go ahead and minimize my console for more room here. So equals await, we can then say canvas dot render to buffer. We then have to pass in the actual configuration that we just created for our chart.js. And keep in mind that this isn't a normal canvas object from the actual canvas library. It does use it behind the scenes, but this is the canvas rendering service, which is imported from our NPM package. So scrolling back down, we now actually have an image. And so now we need to create a message attachment. And so we have to actually import that from discord.js. So const empty object equals require discord.js. And then within here, I create the object first. So that way VS code knows where we're importing from. And then we now have autocomplete support. So I can then say message attachment. I can then press enter to autocomplete that. We can then scroll back down and I'm going to create a new constant here called attachment. This is going to equal new message attachment and we can pass in the image. We can then say message.channel.send attachment. And this is all we need to do. We can go ahead and save this, go back into our console. We can run the code and note that previously, whenever we actually ran the command, it just console logged the data. So we can go ahead and run this, open up Discord again, and I can run exclamation point chart and we get an error. Okay, so it says dates is not defined. We can go back. I see that I call this date. So within VS Code, I'm gonna press F2 and I'm gonna call this dates. I can then save and run the code again. Going back, I can then run exclamation point chart. And we now get a chart right here. However, this is slightly different because this is actually transparent. If that's something you want, that's fine, but I'm gonna show you how you can customize the background color. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the bot. We can go back to VS Code. And we now have to work within this chart callback function here. This is actually fairly simple to do. We can say chart.js or whatever you named your parameter dot plugins dot register. And this is gonna take in an object as an argument. And this is going to have a series of different functions that you can call with different stages. In this exact case, the only thing we need to listen for is before draw with a capital D, that's important. And this is going to be a function which is going to have a chart instance. And within here, we can then actually edit the background color of this chart before it is drawn, hence the name before draw. So the exact details of what I'm about to do can be found within the chart.js documentation. And again, I do plan on covering chart.js without discord.js involved in more detail in the future. So if you are confused, feel free to check the documentation or wait for those videos. But we're gonna go ahead and destructure something from the chart instance or whatever you name your parameter dot chart. And this is going to be the CTX. Now we can use this to fill in the background of the chart. This is actually fairly simple. We can say CTX dot fill style equals white. And then we can say CTX dot fill rect for rectangle. And this is going to be where we want to actually fill this using X, Y, width, and height. Now, obviously these don't represent anything, but these are going to be the parameter structure. So the X and Y are going to be zero, zero, which is going to be the top left corner of the entire rectangle. And then the width is going to be chart instance dot chart dot width. And then also chart instance dot chart dot height. Whoops, I wrote chart, not chart instance. And actually these lines can all be simplified because we're using chart three times here. So I'm actually going to destructure something from the chart instance and that something is going to obviously be the chart object. So now I can go ahead and get rid of a couple of these things and it makes our code a little bit more clean. Let's go ahead and save this and run the code. I can then go into discord and I can run exclamation point chart. And we now see a chart with a white background. So this is how you're going to create a dynamic chart within discord JS using chart JS and canvas with that NPM package. I'll be covering more about chart JS in the future, but this is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching this discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen. Now, if you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff keys discord, which can be found in the video description.